This is the Highly Sensitive Person Podcast, a weekly podcast for people who experience the world brighter, louder, and more intensely. Join me on a journey of acceptance of our highly sensitive person traits. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 18. I'm your host, Kelly. In the Highly Sensitive Person podcast, I share personal stories and information about being a highly sensitive person in the hopes that it can help other people learn more about themselves and become more accepting of themselves, just like that information helped me when I first learned about it. I want to start by sharing a really nice email I received from a listener. I won't reveal his name because I'm not sure if he's cool with that. And he writes, My wife is a highly sensitive person and I never really understood or believed it. I came across your podcast a few weeks ago and remembered her mentioning HSP, so I listened to the first few. You've helped me understand all of the little nuances of her personality. Thank you for helping me understand my wife. She also listens now and feels better knowing she isn't the only one who feels this way. Thanks so much for that really kind email. It's really cool to know that spouses and partners of highly sensitive people can also find value in this. Today's topic is jobs, careers, professions. The number one thing people search for at my blog, highlysensitiveperson.net, is information on the best jobs for highly sensitive people. And that makes sense because your career is such a huge part of your life. We spend most of our waking hours doing it. Having a terrible job can basically make our whole life miserable. In fact, a 2013 Gallup study showed that only 3 out of 10 Americans actually enjoy their job. That sucks. We owe it to ourselves to find something we enjoy or at least don't hate. Well, I can tell you that I have found the answer. I've figured out the best job for highly sensitive introverts. And yes, I'm including the word introvert because I am an introvert. Not all HSPs are. 70% are approximately. But I do want to clarify for those highly sensitive extroverts out there that this information may be specific to introverts, so I just wanted to clarify that. So let me first tell you how I came to my conclusion of what the best job is for HSP. I worked in an office for around 10 years, with most of that time either in a cubicle or in a room with other people, and I hated it. Everything played a part in bothering me in an office workplace. And I talk about this in detail in episode 4 about hating working in a cubicle. Just a quick rundown of things that bother me. Lights that are too bright, bad smells, uncomfortable chair, worrying about office friendships and politics, worrying about whether I'm doing a good job, worrying about my relationship with my boss, deadlines, traffic, boredom, having to be punctual, fighting distractions like noise and social media, and the guilt from wasted time and the lack of perceived freedom and the feeling of being controlled, which I also talk about in episode 15. When you sum all that up, what's really sapping my energy? What's the basis of all of those irritations? And I think it's three things. Being forced to be around other people or have social interactions, environmental annoyances, and again, feeling controlled, as I mentioned before. So what's the answer? What's the best job? Are you ready? It's being self-employed, working for yourself. Yep, that's it. Think about it. The best job for a highly sensitive person is one where you control every aspect of the environment. Now, some of you might feel like that isn't a real answer. Being self-employed might sound like this impossible thing that would require a complete and total change of your entire lifestyle to obtain. It's only for college-age whiz kids or people who are doing some kind of shady, scammy business. It's too late for you because you're already established in another career. But you know what? In many cases, that's not true. Yes, changing your career to one where you work for yourself would be really difficult sometimes, but it's not impossible. And it might be worth the risk and the hassle to be happier in the long run. I know a lot of people who have created their own businesses and are doing very well. These folks control everything, plus they have the excitement of seeing their own creation flourish. They have the freedom to work when they want, where they want, including anywhere in the world. So what are some examples of some of these ways you can make money on your own? Here's a really short list. You could do freelance writing, graphic design, or web design, create an online store and sell other people's products, 
manufacture and sell your own new product, write ebooks, create online courses and paid seminars, or be a voiceover artist, a career or life coach, or affiliate marketer. I actually know people who do every single one of these things that I just listed, so it is possible. Now, working for yourself isn't a cakewalk. You'll probably end up working more hours than you would at your old job. But the difference is that you're doing something that you care about and you're passionate about, and that makes all the difference. Now, of course, there are downsides to working at home for yourself. One of the main things I struggle with is staying motivated and procrastination. Because I am my own boss, the amount of work I get done is completely based on how hard I work and how fast I work. It can be easy to be lazy when you don't have a boss telling you that you have deadlines. And another thing that can be tricky is, even though I am an introvert and a lot of HSPs are introverts, it's not good to be completely socially isolated, which can happen when you work from home. You can kind of be in your own little shell all day and in the evening as well. So you want to make sure that you get out and still do get social interaction. <laughs> so how can you take the first steps to changing your career to working at home for yourself? I have created a list on the blog of some online training resources, some that are free, but most that are paid, that can help you get started. And you can find that in the show notes at highlysensitiveperson.net slash episode 18. But if you aren't interested in working for yourself, that's okay. Next week, I'm going to talk about other jobs and careers that are good for highly sensitive people if you can't or don't want to work at home for yourself. And I'll talk about which HSP traits are good for which jobs. So make sure you tune in next Tuesday. Until then, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes if you like the show. Head over to the blog at highlysensitiveperson.net to find blog posts about all kinds of HSP-related topics and sign up for the newsletter. Thanks for your time. Thanks for listening. 